everyone. As chairman of Sheen and Tate, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you to the first in our Future of series. Uh, we wanted to make a kind of thought leadership contribution in this difficult time for everyone. And we've come up with the idea of short conversation interview formats with me as chairman, with a range of people in Scottish public policy, education and business life. Um, our first in the series is, uh, I think, very importantly, the future of the economy, the future of the Scottish economy. And I can't think of anyone better to be in conversation with than Professor Graham Roy, a uh, good friend and uh, a current colleague in my capacity as a visiting professor at the University of South Clyde and former colleague uh, in his roles with the Scottish Government. Graham is one of Scotland's foremost economists and uh, he's a real pragmatist as well. As a lapsed economist, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, Graham is the Director of Economics at uh, the University of Strathclyde and I think known to many as the um, Director of the Fraser of Allender Institute, one of Scotland's leading independent, um, thought-provoking research and policy uh, development institutes uh, in Scotland. Uh, Graham has had an illustrious career before that. Uh, he was with a uh, senior civil servant at Scottish Government and he headed up uh, the First Minister's policy unit, which is where I worked with him before. So I always enjoy a conversation with Graham. And Graham, thank you so much for agreeing uh, to be our, our first participant in this future of uh, series. So, Graham, just turning to the economy in general, um, your last economic monitor in June really talked about this, you know, most dire and difficult recession in Scottish history, but you've been looking at some new data and I wonder if you could just open up with, with that and your thoughts generally on, on what you're seeing. Thank you very much, Lena, and th thank you very much for the opportunity to come along and, and speak with you um, today. And yeah, so I mean, there's a few things I think are, are quite important to understand and think about where our economy is at the moment. And, and how the economy is performing will look very different for individual firms. And I think it's one of the key things is about understanding your position and how that relates to the wider economic context. And it will look quite different. So, I mean, as you mentioned, you know, we're, we're in a really you know, unprecedented economic situation just now. We've never seen anything like, like this. And largely because that most recessions that occur, they're, um, they, they occur because something fundamental has happened that we didn't expect. And that's entirely true with this pandemic. But the key thing is that our response is entirely deliberate. So we have caused this recession by shutting down our economy to protect the public health. And that's entirely the right thing to do. So that then what happens next really depends upon whether you're a glass half full or glass half empty person. So if you're a positive person, once we get through this crisis, then our economy should start to recover and should start to bounce back to um, levels it was prior to this crisis. If you're someone who's a bit more pessimistic, there's big risks in all of that. And it would never shut down our economy at this scale before, and it will take some time to recover. Now, that, the implications of that really matter for what type of business you are. So if you're in a business where it's, it's relatively easy for you to shut down for a period of time and then to start back up again, then actually this crisis will have relatively limited impacts from you. However, if you're a company where that easing back significantly um, is actually going to have fundamental implications for your business model, then the recovery is going to be that much more difficult. So understanding the nature of this crisis, the difference between the temporary effects and the long-term effects is really crucial for businesses in thinking about how they operate and how they, they, they move going forward. So, I mean, turning to the big economic picture, what we've seen is a, you know, a tremendous shutdown in our economy. So the Scottish economy you know, fell by about 25% between the, the pre-COVID period and the, the bottom of the downturn. Now, to put that in context, the financial crisis was a drop of 5%. So we're talking about something much, much more significant. But the point I'm making about some of that will start to bounce back. And we're already beginning to see some of that come through as the economy starts to uh, start back up again. But one of the things that we're beginning to see from the latest data is that while the economy is starting back up, it's only going to go back to a fraction of what it was prior to this crisis, at least for the foreseeable future. So the economy is starting to come out of its hibernation, but it's going to take time before it gets back to normal. Mm. And I know that you've had a whole range of scenarios from 
you know, the more positive, so the, the half full scenario um, through to the more pessimistic. And I think one of the very difficult things for businesses and, you know, Sheen and Tate represent from the SMEs, the, the rural, hospitality, people that would like to invest, angels, you know, yeah. and that kind of uncertainty is so difficult. And I think that, you know, if you just bombard yourself with the news, is it Andy Haldane's deep V, is it a longer, and, it, and you know, it might be a step forward and two back with local lockdowns. And, you know, we see New Zealand actually locking down Auckland just again today. So, you know, it, from what you're saying um, is it's a fraction of what it was, but it could be that that's, you know, only a temporary thing and then it, it, goes, it goes back again. So it's preparing for that uncertainty, I think, is very difficult. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things that I would say is that if you hear an economist tell you uh, about what they think is going to happen over the next year to 18 months, don't believe them. They may not believe them in normal times, but definitely don't believe them in, in the current times. And I think that that point you make about resilience is absolutely crucial for businesses at this time because you're looking out to the next you know, six months, next year, and no one can really know with certainty where we're going to yes. end up. And there's risks of, of to public health and potential you know, changes to lockdown. We've already seen that in recent days in Aberdeen and the impact that that's having on the local economy. But it's only once we start to open back up our economy again, once we'll find out the damage that's been done during this crisis. So only be when, when we start, activity starts again and we realise that supply chains are broken all over the place. It will only be when we find that maybe markets we are operating in are no longer open to us and it'll only be when um, we, you know, things start back up, we might find challenges with finding the right staff or having employment in the right location or working from home and all those different th types of things. It'll only be when that happens. But also that'll be when the opportunities kick in as well. So there will be opportunities from business as there is in any change, any crisis, there'll be some prospects for businesses to rethink what they have to do. And that point you make about resilience but also flexibility to be able to flip and to do take on new things is going to be yeah. absolutely crucial yeah i mean i suppose i'm a great believer in you know the power of mindset and you know a power of attitudes and you and i have discussed before about you know scotland has so much going for it but has sometimes underperformed from under confidence and that issue about ambition and mindset and you know do you think that you know I mean, not kind of Pollyanna mindset if you just think it will happen differently, but that that way of, of finding your own way through this and uh, looking for opportunity, I mean, I, I think that's got to be important because if you just listen to all of the naysayers, then you can talk yourself into an even worse situation. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really well made point. And, and even simple things like if you believe there's going to be a, a significant shakeout across business models, some businesses will struggle through this. But the stronger businesses will get through it. And actually, then that becomes an opportunity to grow market share. And when the economy starts to recover again, to pick up customers that were maybe um, uh, customers of other your competitors in the past. So that being resilient and strong through this and showing that ambition is absolutely crucial when there's turmoil and there's change kicking in. But it's also thinking outside the box. So if you're an exporter and suddenly you find your markets closed, well, how do you pivot to think about, well, hold on a minute. Um, if, if I'm exporting, somebody might be suffering the same way in terms of importing. So how can I, how can I find out that market opportunity for yes. me? It might not be international, at least in the short term, but maybe to replace someone else in another country who's facing the same struggle to come into Scotland yeah. and the UK. So it's, it's, it's being prepared to be creative and responsive to the challenges uh, that are thrown up in, in all of this. I think it's going to be absolutely crucial for businesses over the next few months.